behalf of the Board of Directors of the HEDS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to the 2020 Best Practice Showcase, celebrating technology, innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Dimari Santiago, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers of the breaking sessions of this room. Although we will have time for questions at the end, the presenters will let you know whether you will be able to address your questions at any time during the presentation. This presentation will be in English. We will appreciate that you change your mobile to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention to this session. Finally, please be sure to complete the evaluation form for the session and hand it, hand it in before you leave this room. Your feedback and recommendations are very important. <coughs> now, we're ready to start. The title of the presentation is Just In the Values of Online Integrated Interlibrary Loans to Broaden Access to Information Resources. Please welcome Mr. Carlos Crespo, Executive Director of COBIMET. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank Thank heads for this opportunity today to present a subject very dear to us, especially in a higher education institution, which is the subject of interlibrary loans. Interlibrary loans has been around for uh, almost since the beginning of time, since people used uh, to borrow different stuff and knowledge books through, throughout the, the history of mankind. Uh, Today, we're going to be exploring the subject of, and the case of the subject of interlibrary loans from a perspective of the automated process and how it will benefit the higher education institutions, not in, only in Puerto Rico, but around the, the heads organization institutions also and the world. Uh, we, we use the title, just in time, the value of online integrated library loans to broaden the access to information resources because we are living in an age where information is being produced daily through different kinds of methods and we have been uh, we have in our institution of higher education a limitless amount of information need with limited resources economic resources <coughs> to purchase some of the information that it is available and they need to use for research purposes. Uh, let me just move uh, here to the next slide. Researchers and scholars require an information-rich em environment enabling discovery and reflection leading to the creation of new knowledge. This is very important because uh, our universities, our higher ed education universities, uh, have been the funds have been uh, cut a little bit, and resources are being limited to for research and uh, for like information resources like journals, uh, papers, also uh, theses, all kinds of information. And what has been done is that researchers are looking outside the library for these peer review information resources that they need, and sometimes they do not use the online resources provided by the library to them because they do not find what they need. For this, the interlibrary loan process, which has been around, like I said, for, for most of the humankind, but now recently between the 70s and to uh, the 90s, have been a manual process in which the user, and we will describe later in the presentation, the user or the patron that needs an information for requiring in a manual process sometimes do not have the time to visit the, li the library to get those, those requests done because they are uh, most of our students and researchers are busy people that are not only teaching or not only uh, being students they are also working in different kinds of environments or jobs so time is of an essence Defining the interlibrary loan, uh, or what it is an interlibrary loan, it is defined as a, uh, by the Interlibrary Loan Code for the United States 
An interlibrary loan is the process by which a library requests material from or supplies material to another library. The purpose of the interlibrary loan, as defined by this code, is to obtain upon request of a library user material not available in the user's local library. The benefits of increasing the use of the interlibrary loan is that it strengthens the services library provide by making most of the financial resources. Currently, uh, uh, we will see in the, uh, the libraries spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because they are uh, expending on thousands of resources, but the need for the resources is sometimes small. Like for example, you could have a database with ebooks that it is that has 200,000 ebooks, but if the user only needs like a part of a section of the, of the database, or probably 1,000, 2,000, we are investing in more than we need. So investing the money is very essential in the things that services and, and resources which are uh, important to our researchers. Expand. The expands the library collection of an institution by collaboration through information resource sharing. Uh, one of the most important things, and me from Coimet, uh, we work through collaboration and hence, is uh, resource sharing, not only with information, but also knowledge. And also with uh, resources like professors that contribute like this activity today to the knowledge of all individuals in the institution. So, Collaboration through information so research sharing comes natural to us, right? As being part of heads. The development of collaboration strategy for information sharing through interlibrary loan services have become an important service to reduce the gap of information needed by researchers and scholars. So basically, the strategy is to reduce the gap of information cannot be fulfilled only through uh, manual service, uh, when we will discuss this uh, uh, of interlibrary loans, it should be through an automated process, which is the thing that we are going to be advocating today to you. Let's dig a little bit inside the data regarding the interlibrary loans here in Puerto Rico. We uh, search the IPED database that uh, is basically from the Department of Education in the United States, which all institutions in Puerto Rico are required to uh, uh, send the data. And we were amazed at the data that the institutions that have, that do not have, the percentage of institutions that do not have interlibrary loan service is a high 38%. This is, for, for us, it was staggering. In the United States, it's less than that. Uh, the total ILL and documents received yearly by institution is 6,664, and they provided to other libraries were 10,326. So we are providing more information than receiving, than requesting the information. What does that, what does that tell, you, tell us? Well, we are not using the system efficiently. It's more, almost double. We should be receiving as well as we are providing. It should be the same or nearly the same because we are, we, the institutions need to take advantage of receiving this information. We dug deeper into this and we wanted to know the total interlibrary loans received by institution name and it was this institution, the University of Puerto Rico in Rio Piedras that received the most interlibrary loans. There were 1,851. The Inter-American University, which has a lot of the uh, 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 centers of the, of the Inter-American University, San Germán, Bayamón, and also the metro where they were also included, the Universidad Central del Caribe, the, and the University of Puerto Rico Medical Science and Ponce Health Science University. 
there's something particular in this data is that most of them are research institutions that uh, like have medicine or provide graduate studies. So the interlibrary loan has been more related to research regarding higher, higher education or graduate students. But we can, if we better this service, and we will see how we can better this and how the case of our institutions are been doing it, we can expect more of these interlibrary loans, not only in the graduate or postgraduate, we can do it on, in undergraduate students also. The Ponce Health Science University, which is the one that provides the most interlibrary loans to other institutions, is staggering 5,138 interlibrary loans a year. Still, the numbers for in the previous slide show that for the number of, of students that we have uh, on, uh, on, on higher education or universities in Puerto Rico, it's, a, it's low, very low. Now we're going to discuss a little bit about the interlibrary loans from the manual versus the automated request process. Manual meaning we are filling forms. We are filling forms that are not automated that we require sometimes to bring to the university in, by person or, or sending it by email, filling it out and waiting it out. The, and we were going to go through the process of, uh, of a patron for uh, requesting in a manual process. The patron, the patron searches the online public access catalog, electronic database, or other internet resources. And they do it not simultaneously, they go by each of the by each of the system or databases to ask to, to see if they can find the information that they need. Not an automatic, not a simultaneous, if not sequential searching process. Then, after they do the search, the patron completes the form by hand or electronically submits it to the library. By then, the request is received by the library, which, which processes that through searches in a catalog of a partner institution, consortium agreement for request resource submission. Once the library does this part, does this part which is searching for partner libraries, the submission, the library requested to the university and then the user must sometimes go to the university, sign an agreement and receive the information or, or uh, to uh, receive the patron receive the information that they need. One thing that is very important is the uh, copyright agreements for this interlibrary loan process is essential. That's why most of the institutions require that the user signs a form saying that they will comply with uh, copyright and uh, fair use of the information that they need. Uh, we will see now how we are doing it in an automated library loan process, uh, which is the process that uh, the institutions that are members of COVID-19, uh, most institutions that have the service of the automated process, use the interlibrary loan. The pattern search the discovery system which allows simultaneous search of the online public access catalog, electronic database, and indices in the institution's libraries. Uh, the discovery system, I'm gonna be explaining it a little bit more, works like a Google-based search engine, which you can use to simultaneously search all the documents that are on the online catalog all the documents which are in the repository, and also databases for books, uh, that will be books, uh, journals, theses, and all the information that they require or need. This reduces the time for the user to go to different places to do a sequential search for the information. Once the user searches, the, the, the pattern completes an automated pre-populated form 
with the bibliographical information of the resource that they need. And we will see an example of how this works in a couple of minutes. The library uses an automated world collaborative tool to search for the resource which allows the, not only the institution, but uh, uh, the user to comply with the copyright because the system already provides the form for an automated process for the copyright and comply with the copyright laws that are uh, comes with the documents that they've been using. And once the, the, it is processed, it is sent to a, a, a library uh, page. It's a more simple process, reducing in two areas. It will reduce by doing the simultaneous search, pre-populating the form, and com in and compliance with uh, copyright, and also with a world of collaborative institutions that have information and can provide it to the uh, patrons of the university. One thing is important also, the, the sharing of the information, sometimes it is free. The institution, some institutions do not charge for the information just complying with the copyright, but sometimes it's cost. There's a cost involved for sending that information to the patient, right? So the institution need to have a budget for that part, but the budget, that budget will come from reducing the quantity they invest in electronic resources that they really don't need. The benefits of the automated library loan process or a lot, ease of use by for the patrons, a single search using the discovery system, and a pre-populated bibliographical information ILL form. The libraries manage ILL workload more efficiently with a manual process for ILL. There is a lot of time in one-on-one -on -one conversation with other libraries to fulfill the request. And the system that we use, which is WordShare, simplifies the process by showing the other libraries holding policies and fees before you make the request. So, in general, the automated process reduces the complexity that the, that the patron and the institution library uh, have. It is essential. Like for example, uh, we did a customer survey, the user satisfaction survey, and one of the things that I, it was done a couple of months ago, before the automated process, was that for requiring an information resource, the patrons needed to go through a long process of contacting different people to do an internet library loan, and it, for them it was a waste of time. We received multiple uh, uh, form completion, uh, customer uh, satisfaction with that type of, of, of measurement. From, we started the process in Gen and no on November 1st, the automated ILL request on November 1st, 2019 through June, January 16, we have 95 total requests for interlibrary loans. Really? So we are talking almost two months only. And by automating the process, we have received almost, if we go back to the to this data, in two months, we can almost reach most of the top eight institutions through that are, are requesting or sending interlibrary loans. I can imagine if we can continue this, we are receiving in a weekly basis almost, and this week we have received three interlibrary loans. So it's, we will have probably more than 300 uh, interlibrary loans processed and requested. So the institutions that have benefited from this automated process are the Carlos and Viso or are submitted interlibrary loan uh, through the automated system, which are the Carlos Arviso University San Juan, Carlos Arviso University Miami, Atenas College, Conservatorio de Musica, and American University. So, as you see, 
there are research institutions and there are under, uh, uh, graduate and undergraduate institutions requesting this information. And the response time is between 24 to 48 hours for each request to be fulfilled or answered. Let's go to a live demo, which is the most powerful. You, you want to see how the process works. So let's show here how the process is. This is the virtual library. We're going to be using an example right here. This is the discovery system that we use for the virtual library for our Visual University, in which, let me see, we receive this same day, an interlibrary loan request. Let me use one of the examples of today. I have not done the search, but we're going to try it. Of one that we use today. So in this example, I'm going to be, so we have limited time, so I'm going to be using one that we already have requested, somebody has requested. Once the user identifies a record, he will have a button here which says request the item through interlibrary loan. That means that the item is not available in the virtual library through a normal process of a PDF document or a, or a, a HTML presenting on the, on the page. So what the user will do is click on request this item and a pre-populated form will include the bibliographical information of the resource that we just saw. So this information is already pre-populated in the form, and what the user needs to do is fill out the form. Institution. Provide a valid e e institutional email. This is very important because we cannot process any requests which are not institutions that are uh, affiliated with the organization or the institution. All the, the fields that have a uh, star are, requ are required fields. And the user just submits. You can submit. Uh, it will send a message. Your request has been submitted successfully. And not only the library will receive an email with the submission, the user also receives an email confirming that he made an interlibrary loan request. This is the email that the person that submits it ha, uh, has as evidence of the date submitted for the information of the interlibrary loan. Then we will receive a notification just like this. We meaning the library. And then we will be moving towards the word share resources and contact, just reply with the information that the user needs, uh, with the file or the information that the user has requested. What we are experiencing is that I, I know as many of you researchers have done in the past is that not only do we need in our libraries, uh, uh, virtual libraries, information of uh, full text documents, we can add indices, indices that provide the bibliographical information that they can retrieve. Like for example, uh, this information is from a database that uh, is very famous in the, in the research world, which is called Science Direct, and articles are very expensive. So the institutions, including most of the institutions, cannot 
because uh, what I'm going to tell you is something that is common knowledge. A subscription for like uh, the University of Puerto Rico for Science Direct costs almost $1 million a year because information is not free. <laughs> in most of the cases, our research information are included in journal, which are limited to this. So what we do is to interlibrary loan, reduce the cost. We don't need to subscribe the whole database. And we can then have the process the, the data, the, the index, index data and bibliographical information included and provide the virtual library services, the interlibrary loan service to the user. One of the things that I will recommend also is that for our scholars, use Google Scholar. Google Scholar also integrates, could integrate to this uh, system which then your library will also see the information here for the request of the interlibrary loan. One, so in, in uh, summary, the system, automating the system, will provide with a lot of information, <coughs> reduce cost for the institution, and it's a simple process that they can perform and integrate. So basically that's what we wanted to present today. Uh, if there are any questions, how are uh, going to be the important? This uh, automated form for interlibrary loan can be used for the persons that are using EBSCO host or EBSCO discovery service. That form can be integrated easily contacting their EBSCO, their EBSCO uh, uh, provider technical support. So any questions? Nope. Well, uh, thank you very much, Dan. I uh, really appreciate the time, and I hope that uh, most uh, institutions take advantage of uh, automated process or system for interval Thank you.